Usually, an artist doesn't have the option uh, to choose uh, a building and uh, play around there. Uh, and in this case, as in a few other cases, it had to be with, uh, by invitation. And there had to be somebody to, uh, with a budget uh, willing to spend money on uh, what I or others uh, would propose. But it is the institutional framework as much as the architectural uh, aspect, yes. Well, in speaking of those uh, two things, I think it would be interesting to move to the next, uh, okay. the next project, which also involves, uh, I guess, an, an artist intervention in the building. Right. So, the next one, please. Um, uh, this is very much as you say, it, uh, and it's uh, at a somewhat more imposing level than the German pavilion in uh, Venice. Uh, this is the facade of the Reichstag as it has been uh, uh, rebuilt or rather uh, renovated by uh, Norman Foster. Uh, in the late 90s, uh, right, and I should go further back, uh, when uh, East and West Germany were united, uh, a few years later, uh, the uh, German parliament decided to move the capital uh, back from Bonn to Berlin, where it had been uh, uh, since the uh, 1870s and to move back into the building that had been completed uh, in the last decade of the, 19, uh, of the 18th uh, century uh, that had been built as the uh, house for the German parliament, the Reichstag. Uh, that building had been severely damaged during the war and uh, could not be used, but uh, contrary to some uh, uh, assumptions, popular assumptions, uh, the building uh, is not representative in any uh, way of the Nazi uh, uh, history. Uh, in fact, uh, there are uh, theories according to which the Nazis burnt it down and uh, started uh, uh, the persecution uh, a sanctioned persecution uh, of Jews in Germany because supposedly it was a uh, Dutch uh, Jew who had uh, um, been the arsonist. Uh, this building uh, was not used by the Nazis after it, it got uh, uh, ruined. Uh, when the uh, German government moved back to Berlin, uh, and uh, with it, of course, the parliament, uh, they decided uh, the building should also uh, have works by contemporary artists uh, installed permanently in this building. Uh, four uh, artists from abroad were uh, invited, uh, representing the four uh, occupation powers uh, uh, of Germany, and then a number of German artists, uh, among them myself. I was, uh, I believe, the last one who was invited. Uh, we were assigned a specific uh, spaces in the building. Uh, I was assigned a, an, a courtyard uh, open to the sky uh, to make proposals which then were to be reviewed and approved or disapproved by the art committee of, of the parliament. Uh, the next one, please. Uh, I had spent uh, some time in Berlin in uh, the uh, uh, around 1984, preparing an exhibition. And during that time, uh, on, a, uh, on a Sunday afternoon, I was uh, walking through the, what is uh, somewhat similar to Central Park, perhaps not as, as large, uh, but it is in the center of the uh, city, uh, Tiergarten, uh, and uh, came across uh, the then still ruined uh, Reichstag. It was a sunny day, 
And uh, as has been the case for a decade or more before, also on that sunny Sunday, uh, the area around there was populated uh, by Turks. Uh, Berlin has the largest Turkish population of any city outside of uh, Germany. Turks were uh, brought in to uh, help with the, uh, with the industry, uh, construction and other things, uh, doing jobs that the Germans were no longer willing to take. Uh, these uh, uh, Turks were there with their families. They were grilling lamb. Uh, the kids were playing uh, 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 soccer on the field. There were aunts and uncles. It was the large Turkish family. And I looked up at this ruin, which was situated right up against the wall that divided the city, and I saw the inscription, Dem Deutschen Volke, to the German people. And it uh, struck me that, uh, even though it was not intended originally uh, in this fashion, this meant that all these Turks uh, enjoying themselves on that Sunday afternoon were told, you are not part of this. You stay out. This is only for the Germans. Uh, it further dawned on me that uh, the term folk, uh, which uh, is uh, in most other countries uh, a rather innocuous term, people, uh, w was uh, heavily uh, burdened by the history of Germany in the 20th century. Folk was uh, interpreted by the Nazis in ethnic terms. Uh, one had to carry a, uh, an ethnic passport in which one uh, had to uh, prove that one was indeed ethnically for generations a German and not of any other uh, ethnic extraction. It was dividing the population of Germany into two, and the other part, the supposedly non-Germans, were eventually excommunicated or worse. So there was something in this inscription that bothered me a great deal. And when I was considering what I would do with the invitation uh, for the site that I was assigned, eventually I came up uh, with a, uh, uh, an answer. And the answer I have, uh, is related to what I remember having read in uh, high school, uh, an essay by Bertolt Brecht in which, uh, very beautifully uh, titled, uh, The Five uh, Difficulties in Writing the Truth. Uh, he said there, and this was written when he was in exile from Germany in the 30s, uh, he said there, one uh, way to avoid a lie today is to replace the word folk with the word bevölkerung, to replace the term uh, 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 folk or people with the uh, term population. Uh, and I, I realized that this perhaps is the answer, and I went with it. Uh, the next one, please. Uh, this is the uh, site that I was assigned. Uh, there are two interior courtyards open to the sky uh, that can also be viewed by the, uh, uh, by the visitors of the Reichstag. It is open uh, to visitors on the roof. Uh, very beautiful if you ever get to Berlin. Uh, don't uh, has, uh, don't uh, uh, miss going up to the roof. You can also go into the dome all the way up. You can look all over Berlin. The next one. Uh, this is uh, the uh, uh, drawing that I uh, attached to my proposal. Uh, I propose that in the center of that courtyard, in the same typeface of the facade, uh, should be the dedication to the population, which would include everyone who was uh, uh, living in Germany and is living in Germany. And in effect, uh, today, 9% of the German population is uh, foreign extraction. 
Uh, I should also uh, mention in this context, and that is very relevant to, to the Parliament and the Reichstag's history, that uh, uh, over a hundred uh, members of the German Parliament in the 30s were uh, stripped of their German citizenship. And uh, over 70 of them did, uh, did not die a natural death. And a number of them, in addition, uh, committed suicide. It was speaking about uh, something that was closely associated with the history, not only of Germany, but of that particular institution. Uh, the next one, please. Uh, the uh, Art Committee of the uh, uh, Bundestag, the German Parliament, uh, discussed uh, this proposal. Uh, there were two uh, sessions I attended. These sessions I answered questions they had. And then the committee voted overwhelmingly with one dissenting vote that this proposal uh, should be uh, realized. And when I left uh, Berlin uh, for New York, where I live, uh, I thought, well, now I get a contract in the mail, and uh, then we get going. Uh, I was disabused of this very soon. Uh, the one dissenter, a member of the Christian Democratic Party, a conservative but very large party in the German parliament, uh, started a media campaign uh, very successfully, uh, which eventually led, uh, the German papers, the media were full of uh, this uh, debate over my proposal for four months. Uh, and a, the bylaws of the parliament uh, required that if 150 members of the parliament uh, wanted to uh, uh, discuss and then vote on uh, an issue that a committee had already approved, then it would be open to the entire body of the parliament and a vote would have to be taken. And it actually got to that. Uh, what I'm showing you now very quickly, because I do not want to dwell on each uh, uh, person and image there, uh, is how the uh, media uh, then uh, presented on the day when uh, for an uh, entire hour the German parliament discussed this proposal and eventually voted for it with a majority of two votes, how this uh, appeared in the media and how the various speakers looked when they participated in this. The next one. So this is the TV news of the evening. Uh, what, what, was, what were the arguments against the proposal? Um, there were several. The main argument against it was uh, we are done with uh, talking about uh, the, the, the horrible past of the, the Nazi, Nazi period. We are now a, a normal country like everyone else, and we are proud of uh, being German, and uh, one should not uh, question this anymore. That was uh, uh, the main argument of the dissenter in, in the uh, committee who started the campaign against it. Um, the other argument, and it's uh, good that your question prompts me to speak about that, because uh, my proposal did not only uh, mean that the uh, inscription would be paraphrased in a, a manner that I would accept, namely dedicating uh, this uh, thing to the population. Uh, I also uh, proposed that uh, all the members of the parliament uh, be invited, as well as those who would be elected in the future, be invited to bring 100 pounds of soil from their constituency to this site, uh, which would be spread out around the, uh, the letters and uh, eventually uh, would become uh, a wild, uncontrolled jungle. No gardener was supposed to interfere with this. And of course, the, uh, the pigeons that also exist in Berlin would uh, add uh, uh, their share. Uh, I was accused to uh, have uh, uh, 
adopted a ritual uh, that the Nazis uh, uh, was blood and soil, blut and borden, uh, and uh, that this is, in fact, a, a Nazi. Uh, uh, it's an unacceptable uh, national socialist aspect of this work. And my uh, answer to this was that uh, everyone uh, living in Germany is living on the territory of Germany, terra, uh, Latin word meaning soil, and this is in effect the definition of the extent to which uh, German laws that are uh, uh, passed by this parliament uh, uh, reaches. And, uh, and the, the Turks and all the other foreigners have that and many other things, of course, uh, in common with the indigenous population. Um, the next one, please. Uh, this is uh, the gentleman from the Christian Democratic Party who started the whole ball rolling. Uh, he is now a, uh, he has gained an influence. He's now the second uh, person uh, uh, behind Angela Merkel, uh, the leader of the Christian Democratic Party. Next one. This is a member of the SPD who spoke, uh, the Social Democratic Party, uh, who spoke uh, fervently for the proposal. Next. This is Antje Folma, uh, a representative of the Green Party, uh, who spoke against it. Uh, uh, interestingly enough, the uh, the members of the parliament uh, or the parties were divided over uh, the issue. That is to say, from almost each of the parties, there was one uh, representative speaking for it and another one against it. This one was uh, the Green Party member speaking against it. The next one. Uh, this is her colleague again from the Green Party speaking for it. Next one. This is a uh, Liberal Democratic Party member speaking against it. Next one. A colleague from the same party speaking for it. Next one. Uh, a Social Democratic Party for, uh, member from Munich speaking against it. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> Uh, a, the only member of the Christian Democratic Party, a former president of the parliament, uh, Rita Zusmut, spoke for it and was also part of the, uh, the, uh, the, the art committee and from the first day was a fervent supporter. She was the only one in her party who voted for it. Where, where, were they supporting your right of freedom of expression or were they supporting the notion that you were putting forth about Germany as... Uh, no, they, as they voted on whether or not this project be done. Whether in, in their house, in the Reichstag, this project would be realized. Was all the yeah, but but did they agree because they 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 join they they agree with your premise that that uh, population is an appropriate word? Yes, to yes. The next one, please. Uh, this is the uh, one member that the PDS the. Party of uh, Democratic Socialism, the successor party to the East German Government Party. Uh, he spoke for it. Next one. Uh, this is the uh, uh, present uh, uh, president of the uh, parliament, uh, Wolfgang Thierse, who was la the last speaker. He was the most fervent. Right, right, I'm sorry. He was uh, speaking for it and was speaking for it with the uh, the the, uh, the authority of uh, uh, his position as the president. The next one. And so, as I said, uh, with a, a very, very slim uh, majority of two votes, uh, it was passed. And then uh, uh, I 
prepared the, the, the site, and uh, uh, half a year later, uh, it was inaugurated. You see here uh, Wolfgang Thiers, the president, and I bringing the, the first uh, bag of uh, soil uh, to the site. Uh, Thiers uh, um, uh, picked up soil from the Jewish cemetery of his constituency uh, in the eastern part of Berlin. Uh, there were a number of uh, members of parliament who brought uh, soil from uh, former concentration uh, camp sites. Uh, many of them uh, uh, engaged their communities uh, to find uh, locations from which uh, symbolically laden uh, soil should be collected. Others just went to their backyard and picked up soil from there. Altogether, about 230, 40 or so uh, have uh, deposited soil from their constituency by now. Next one. <laughs> Uh, this is a photograph from the roof into the uh, uh, court uh, of the following year. The next one. And a few close-ups, and uh, they can be flipped through very quickly, so don't wait for me to give you uh, a signal. Uh, these are uh, shots that I took uh, in the following years. There's a misunderstanding. See the next one, and the next, and the next. See it. This is how it looks there. Okay. No. Um, I, I understand that you, you asked for this project not to be taken care at all in terms of gardening. No, right. No gardening at all, right? right. So this is wild growth. This, as I uh, suspected would happen, uh, uh, soil always contains uh, seeds uh, and roots and they sprout. <laughs> So this is a, a garden of weeds, so to speak. And actually, during the discussion, there was also a, a somebody who objected to this being weeds that uh, normally should be uh, uh, extracted and thrown away. The next one. Next. Next. Oh, this is the last one. No, so I don't know how we're doing with time. Well, well, we can talk a little bit about this. Um, no, I just, I, I just wanted to ask about um, well, this, this whole decision of letting the, the, this whole garden grow and, and perhaps the project decay. And, um, what, what, what was your thinking behind uh, that? The, uh, well, uh, as in any other uh, uh, parliaments and, and government building uh, probably around the world, uh, also this one was uh, uh, under constant supervision for security reasons. Uh, and everything pretty much was controlled. And uh, I wanted to introduce something into this uh, 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 high security precinct that is totally uncontrolled and unpredictable. Uh, I also stipulated that uh, uh, the uh, addition of new uh, soil and uh, the, the gro uh, free growth uh, of these plants should last as long as a freely elected parliament meets uh, uh, in this building. So, so effectively, when, when would be the end of this project? Um, as I uh, just said, uh, just the, the uh, next if, if ever the, the German parliament uh, moves into another building or, uh, in my view, uh, it becomes a di dictatorial uh, regime, then uh, that would be the end. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you. Um, well, I well, I think these are two very interesting examples on your um, well long long time concern with with Germany. Even though you haven't lived in Germany for many years, and I think it's interesting that you did two major major uh, event uh, pieces in, in places that uh, well the most visibly represent uh, Germany. And uh, um, I think I think it's a very interesting uh, relationship that that you have with uh, with with Germany in that sense. Um, but I think it will be interesting to also discuss how also, also your work is not only comments on, on, on German history, but also history of other places and, uh, and uh, almost likely, well, or corporate interest and economic interest. Perhaps we can talk about uh, the next piece in that regard. Okay. Unless you want that we 
mention something else about this project? Uh, no, I think uh, yeah. maybe. <laughs> okay, we'll move, yeah. move to the next <laughs> one. Running down on time. You, you see the, the background, and I believe uh, it is necessary to, to provide this information. Uh, it just takes a lot of time to, to, to give you. The next one, please. <laughs> This is a work uh, from the 80s that I produced in New York. It was exhibited in a uh, commercial gallery uh, in, in Soho, when Soho was still a gallery district. Um, it is called Metro Mobileton, in one word. Uh, the oil company Mobile uh, at that time was a separate oil company, one of the seven big ones. Uh, now it is uh, uh, merged with Exxon or Esso, as it uh, is known in other countries. Uh, it was also a time when uh, uh, many uh, companies around the world, big ones, multinationals, oil companies, and others, uh, collaborated. Uh, with the anti uh, with the apartheid regime in South Africa, uh, South Africa until er the early 90s uh, was under a racist rule of the uh, minority white uh, uh, nationalist party. Um, the indigenous population, uh, black population, had no rights, was uh, sequestered in uh, arid uh, parts of the country, uh, and uh, pushed around. Uh, it is only uh, since the early 90s when Nelson Mandela, the first uh, freely elected uh, uh, president of, and uh, black president of uh, South Africa, uh, was uh, introduced. It was a vicious uh, racist regime with which uh, many very big uh, companies around the world, in the US, in Germany, in France, wherever you go, uh, collaborated. In this case, it was uh, mobile. Uh, uh, shareholders uh, uh, asked mobile uh, about its attitude toward uh, uh, collaboration with a racist regime, as it was in uh, South Africa. And their answer, and their official answer was, mobile's management in New York believes that its South African subsidiaries' sales to the police and military are but a small part of its total sales. Uh, mobile did supply all the gasoline, or uh, sorry, not all, but a, a, a sizable portion of the gasoline used by the military and the police uh, of the regime. And further, mobile said total. Uh, Denial of supplies to the police and military force uh, and military forces of a host country is hardly con uh, consistent with an image of responsible citizenship in that country. Uh, quite a, a cynical statement. Uh, what you see here is, in effect, a mock of the facade of the Metropolitan Museum in New York, where uh, since the uh, emergence of blockbuster exhibitions, these exhibitions were, are advertised on the facade with huge banners. In this case, it was a, an exhibition of uh, works from Nigeria, where Mobile had, uh, uh, was extracting oil. Uh, that mobile sponsored. Uh, this is often the case with oil companies and others, that they sponsor uh, exhibitions of artworks uh, of the countries uh, where they do business and uh, it serves uh, public, uh, public relations purposes. The next one, please. Here, uh, a closer look uh, at the work from the side. You see there's a large photo mural behind the banners. The next one. Uh, another one from the other side. And the next one, please. Uh, here, uh, the entire mural 
uh, that you could see uh, if you looked between the gaps. Here, I took them off for, uh, for uh, informational reasons so that you can see what the entire uh, mural is like. It, it is a funeral procession in one of the black uh, uh, squatters camps uh, outside of uh, Cape Town, uh, which was invaded by the police and uh, uh, I don't remember how many, uh, uh, maybe a dozen of uh, the uh, people there were uh, shot by the police uh, to death. And here uh, uh, the coffins are being carried away. The next one. And here on the entablature above the banners, uh, I uh, put a plaque which is probably very difficult for you to read and so I'm going to read it uh, for you. Uh, it says that many public relations opportunities are available through the sponsorship of programs, special exhibitions, and services. These can provide a creative and cost-effective answer to a specific marketing objective, particularly where international, governmental, or consumer relations may be a fundamental concern. I found this uh, explanation for the rationale of uh, uh, the museum to rule sponsors, and for that matter, giving uh, sponsors a reason to get involved in the arts in a little uh, flyer uh, published by the Metropolitan Museum in New York uh, with the uh, telling and rather beautiful title, The Business of Art Knows the Art of Business. <laughs> it couldn't be phrased better to describe the uh, current situation in, uh, uh, in art institutions, both in uh, the U.S., where uh, private interests uh, always played a, a major role, but also increasingly in Europe uh, with state uh, institutions who uh, are told by the politicians to go out and attract uh, uh, corporate money because they, that is to say the state or we, the taxpayers, to be more precise, are no longer willing to foot the bill. Um, can, can you talk to us about the, the reaction to both uh, Mobile and the Metropolitan to this piece? Um, the Metropolitan Museum did not react in any fashion. But uh, Mobile uh, uh, reacted. Uh, there were a few other uh, works in this exhibition, uh, and they uh, got a. Uh, let me just reconstruct this. No, I'm, I'm mixing two things together, but they are they are in in in, in nature not uh, very dissimilar. Uh, I once got, or the gallery where I exhibited something, got uh, a, a letter from the legal counsel of uh, Philip Morris, that if uh, the gallery would in fact uh, exhibit what was on the announcement, they would go after the gallery. Uh, the situation with mobile was that uh, several mobile works that I had in a, in a solo exhibition at the Tate Gallery in 1984 uh, prompted uh, a letter from uh, New York, from Mobile Headquarters, uh, one of their lawyers, telling the Tate Gallery, the director of the Tate Gallery, that I had violated various uh, trademark and copyright uh, issues and that the Tate Gallery better withdraw the catalog uh, from circulation. And the Tate Gallery being a, a government uh, uh, funded institution, uh, being careful, uh, not knowing uh, US law, uh, temporarily withdrew the catalog as was demanded from circulation. The same uh, was uh, done in Eindhoven. 
Beethoven, uh, Holland, uh, because the catalog was a co-publication of two institutions. And it took uh, the, uh, my, uh, my getting uh, support from a New York law firm, pro bono, that is to say I didn't have to pay. Uh, they did it for the good cause, and I, for that matter, I didn't have the money to engage in litigation. Uh, they sent a, one of their partners sent a letter to the Tate Gallery explaining that uh, U.S. law, on which uh, Mobile uh, claimed to base its claims, U.S. law totally permits uh, what I did. And that eventually then prompted the Tate Gallery at the uh, Sedelik van Ava Museum in, uh, uh, in Eindhoven to release the catalog. Um, would you like to, should we take a question from the audience, from the audience yeah. at this point? Um, una pregunta del público. Um, Este, bueno, eh, yo quiero preguntarle a Hans Hacke. Un momento. Ah, sí. Do you have your, uh... <laughs> Actually, I'll translate for you. Okay. Eh, le quiero preguntarle y le ruego, no solo le pido, sino que le ruego que no me dé una respuesta políticamente correcta. ¿Qué piensa, ¿Qué piensa Hans Hacke eh, de la figura de Boyce como referencia? Es decir, no estoy, eh, estoy más que preguntar por la obra, aunque también acepto una respuesta en, sobre eso. Eh, ¿Cómo ve él, cómo vio a Boyce? Eh, como un referente político en sus posiciones políticas y como, como hombre, ¿no? Como hombre que está eh, realizando una, un, un trabajo con connotaciones políticas. About a year ago, I was uh, asked by the DIA Art Foundation in New York uh, to speak, as they have uh, uh, invited other artists, to speak about an artist of their choice, uh, uh, of, yeah, of their choice, who is represented in the uh, collection of the DIA Art Foundation. And uh, I chose to speak about Boyce. Uh, it was a, uh, not an easy uh, task. I, uh, I, of course, uh, knew much of Boyce's work. I had met him a, a few times personally, uh, and uh, we had a number of things in common, but then also, I believe, uh, uh, our approach to the world, uh, the, uh, the, the approach to the world of by him or me uh, uh, differed drastically. Uh, he was apparently deeply influenced by anthroposophy uh, and uh, believed, and uh, the common thread there is that uh, I grew up in an anthroposoph uh, household, but uh, uh, when I became a teenager, I said uh, this has nothing to do with the world as I know it. But he uh, adhered to it. He was a convert. He was a Catholic to begin with. Uh, he had a notion of uh, politics, of economics, and how to affect something in that world. Uh, he was also um, among the early Green Party uh, members. Uh, he uh, in my view, do, did not understand uh, how that uh, social uh, world functions. He uh, answered uh, in rather obscure, sometimes in the literal term, alchemical uh, terms to, uh, uh, to 
the world around him. Uh, a, a rather uh, significant event occurred in uh, 1982. Both he and I were invited to participate in Documenta. Uh, we both attended a rally in Bonn uh, at the occasion of Ronald Reagan's visit to Bonn uh, to uh, gain approval for the stationing of new nuclear missiles on German territory. Uh, we were uh, in the same boat as far as this uh, uh, political issue was, but he re responded uh, in, at Documenta by uh, melting a mock, but a crown of the Tsar uh, in real gold that he had obtained by, from a, uh, a restaurant owner in Dusseldorf uh, and uh, cast a rabbit. And the rabbit in his own personal mythology had all sorts of qualities and uh, that promoted his ideas and he made a thing out of it. Whereas I painted a, uh, a painting of Ronald Reagan in the old 19th century fashion with a picture lamp above it and uh, a dedication to uh, Marcel Bortas, uh, a red carpet leading from that painting uh, to a, a photo mural uh, of uh, the rally in Bonn uh, that I had uh, photographed. So it was uh, the uh, uh, the protesters against the nuclear uh, missile uh, uh, stationing in Bonn facing uh, the emperor on the other wall uh, being presented in a 19th century uh, uh, fashion. And I believe the, the, the juxtaposition of the, uh, the alchemical rabbit in gold and mine uh, are drastically uh, different in approach and uh, may also illustrate the difference between the two of us. Um, we'll, take another, um, we'll take another question. Hi, I just want to say thank you for your incredibly articulate presentation. Um, I've heard you talk um, about these works before at the Tate a few years ago, um, and I'd forgotten how they, um, how listening to you speak about them animates them and brings a vitality and commitment to the work that I don't always get when I'm looking at uh, photographic documentation of them. So I was wondering, um, I have a question that's kind of lingering in my mind always when I look at your work or when I teach your work, um, is whether or not you agree with Walter Medjamin's um, observation in The Author as Producer that, the, that a correct political tendency is necessarily a correct aesthetic tendency. And are these two realms separable for you? Or, um, or is it possible for one to have more weight within a work of art than another? I don't know what in either case correct means. I thought you might say that. <laughs> Well, for Benjamin, it means um, it's what does it mean? It's it's the avant-garde. It's the political political correctness. Is uh, well, I'm afraid of uh, <laughs> of anybody who uh, claims that uh, he or she knows and everybody else is wrong. Hmm. Uh, and in the same sense, I, I, I don't believe that there is a, a connoisseur, a critic, or art historian who has uh, all the wisdom uh, and all the others uh, uh, don't have it. Uh, this is an, a, an open discussion, it's a discourse, hmm. and uh, it's a give and take. Okay. Well, well, perhaps the second half of my question then: Are these are these two uh, discourses, the aesthetic and the political, um, evenly weighted in your work, in your view? Uh, I try to to uh, to do them to to combine them in a fashion that one cannot uh, take them apart anymore. And do you think you've done that more successfully in some works than in others? Oh, sure. You win some, you lose some. Which ones? <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, I think, you know, I mean, I don't want to inflict my view on the audience any longer, but I think the Germania work is far more successful uh, in synthesizing those than uh, the Bevölkerung, although I think that's a, it's also a very interesting work, but perhaps more interesting in its process than, than in the, the monument that's resulted from this. Well, it's, uh, I, the, uh, the situation in Venice as well as uh, in Berlin are rather unique. Uh, it is quite rare uh, that an artist uh, has uh, this uh, social, institutional, and political material at his or her disposal. So if you don't have it, well, then you have to work with other means, and that is with fiberglass and banners and uh, photographs and what have you. Um, una pregunta. One last question. Anyway. I do want to ask you one thing, and uh, given the subject of history that we are dealing with, and uh, art, and uh, the ephemeral, and uh, the site-specific uh, aspect of your work, how how do you uh, how do you perceive your work as, um, let's say, surviving in, in the future, or is that not in a, even a concern of yours in terms of seeing the work uh, 50 years from now and? Uh, Staying in the in a context, being understood in a context that is appropriate uh, in the future. Well, I don't think my work is different from any other artist's work, as far as its survival in the future is concerned. That's anybody's guess, and uh, we'll have to talk to people in, in 50 years. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you.